Today, I'm going to tell you a story that started about 10 years ago and changed my professional career. When I was a kid, I, w I always wanted to be a car designer. I wanted to design cars. And I remember on the newspaper, on the Sunday newspaper, looking at the concept cars from the auto show. And these cars were very beautiful. Their shape was beautiful. And these cars were all about their form. But I wanted to be a car designer, a car designer about the things under the hood, the engine, the transmission, the suspension. So I studied mechanical engineering. And on my first internship, I was able to go and work for an automotive company at their proving grounds. And in there, I tested and validated vehicles, and I like it very much. I did notice that the cars from the auto show were not quite there. <laughs> and that got me wondering. And the reason is that each car has a function. You need to put the engine, you need to put the transmission. And when you put that function into the form, there's a change in that form. And there's this relationship between form and function that is kind of stressful. And I did not quite understood it at the time. And what I saw was that some of the cars that were at the end of the product development process were not that beautiful as the concept car that they were at the beginning. So I decided, well, I'll design my own car. And I went back to school, and I participated in this project, which is the Formula SA project, sponsored by the Society of Automotive Engineers, where students design, build, and race a Formula-style vehicle. And I remember it was a great experience. And I remember on our design meetings, sometimes we were making decisions on how this car was going to be like. We were making decisions, engineering decisions, based on how the car was going to look. And I was all against that. Because my philosophy at the time was that Form should follow function. So I was like, if I'm going to save 10 pounds in the car and make it faster, I don't care if it looks weird. <laughs> and I was very, very strong. You can ask my friends about it. And, but at the same time, I started to see a trend in the automotive industry and many other consumer products industry. And this is the trend. We have products with the same function, but different form. Here we have uh, three different um, cars, and they are in the, same mar in the same market segment. And they, when you look at their mass, at their horsepower, at their performance and function, they are very, very similar. But when you look at their form, it is different. And people make assumptions and, and make decisions based on, on that form. And they end up saying, OK, this one is much, much better than the other one, even if it isn't. So that really made me question my philosophy. So now I'm, I'm thinking, should function follow form? I, I was confused. And it was when I visited this house, Casa Badlo, in Spain. And we toured the house. And during the tour, they were explaining the design of the house. And one thing stuck with me. And it was how the windows were, and, and the shapes of the windows resemble kind of the gills of a fish. And those forms, at the same time, were a very integral part of the heating 
and the cooling of the house. And that, that, that form and function coming together repeated in many other parts of the house. And that was my aha moment, where I really understood that it is form and function. They are both equally. So now, as an engineer, I want to design for both. I want to design for form and function. So function is easy with my engineering training because we can quantify mass, we can quantify horsepower, and so forth. Now the problem is, how can we measure form? OK, so that's, that's a big problem. So um, let's all think about that the form is the aesthetics of the product. OK, so now I, I will transform my problem into how to measure aesthetics. OK, not, not quite there yet, but uh, I went into the field of philosophy. And I seek inspiration. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I thought about that. And that did not really work, because <laughs> then beauty, I can measure beauty, you can measure beauty, and you can measure beauty, and we are all going to come with different numbers. And as an engineer, I don't like that. <laughs> so I went into another field. I went into the field of mathematics, where American mathematician George Birkhoff um, proposed an equation to measure aesthetics, and I was really excited about it when I found it. And the question is, order divided by complexity. As simple as that. The order, the organization of the product divided by how complex the product is. The first thing that I'm going to say now is that and now I have two problems, how to quantify order and how to quantify complexity. And as an engineer, now I'm going to give my assumptions. I'm going to assume first that complexity is constant. And I will explain now. So we get complexity out of the way. And here is the explanation. If I'm designing the wheel rim on the left here, and my task is to minimize the weight of the rim, I will change that form until I attain that functional performance of lowering the weight. And at the end, the results will be a wheel rim that looks like that one, but it's not quite that one. But at the same time, it's not going to end up like the one on the right. So here are examples of wheel rims with constant complexity. So we already uh, dealt with complexity. Now we go back into order. And I'm going to just focus in the eye. And we are going to do an experiment right now. So what do you see here? And how many? Do you see two triangles? And over there, too? So we have right now a measurement where we are all agreeing, even that there are really there is no triangle in there. So what's happening? What can explain this phenomenon? And the field of Psychology explained this with the Gestalt principles. The Gestalt principles organize all the elements in the image and explain to us how we make that form, how we make the whole. And these principles are proximity, similarity, continuity, closure, symmetry, and parallelism. The problem that I had at this point was that they were only described. But I'm an engineer, so I wrote equations to quantify them, and I'll get them out of the way. And here is the example. <laughs> Here we have wheels with similar complexity, so the, so the complexity is constant. And now I'm going to make a two-dimensional representation of each of, the, of them, and then apply the equations that I wrote regarding the Gestalt principles. And now I have a number, I have measurements for each of these wheels. 
So let's think about this for a second. I just quantify the gestalt of a product, which is the order of the product. And since we have constant complexity, this is then a direct measurement of aesthetics. And what this really is, is a bridge between form and function. Now, different disciplines can use this tool in order to, under, to understand this relationship between form and function when you put a function into a form. This will be useful for in, industrial designers and engineers when they work together. This will be useful for architects and civil engineers. And this is my story. And it is not only a story about aesthetic measurement. It is also a story how, when I was trying to solve this problem, and I embrace and I look at other disciplines, and we try to solve a problem together, we were not only able to solve the problem, we were able to just create new knowledge together. Thank you.